right, great. Are you stud, is that a turtleneck? I love turtlenecks. <laughs> That's like a high collar. You're looking good, brother. Look at that hair. I've it's seen it's lot- fall, and as they say on uh, Saturday Night Live, the sweater weather. Sweater weather. Sweater weather. Sweater weather. <laughs> Man, so good to talk to you. Uh, how you. How you doing? How you been? Good, really good. A lot of life changes in the in the best ways. My wife and I and our two kids, we moved to Franklin, Tennessee. We live a mile away from her parents. And it's, we were in Cali. I mean, I'm, I've been in California. She was born and raised there. And we actually, we when we got pregnant, we were in New York City and we left, I left my FBI Most Wanted show just because it's just different. It's, it's easy to live in New York when you're single or if you're married, but when you have kids, I never saw us raising kids in New York. It's just kind of, kind of made me sad and, and seeing people do it, like teach their own, but like, I want my kid to, to run around in nature, not yeah. a concrete jungle and, you know, by trash. So we moved back to Cali and had the beach and we loved the beach there. And then my wife's family moved to Franklin, Tennessee uh, for different reasons and we're like hmm this isn't what we thought like we thought we'd have the kids around family and family's everything to us so we stuck it there we got pregnant again because we wanted to have our kids kind of close to an age and then we're like having two babies is a lot harder with no support system <laughs> so uh so not like we use or abuse it but I also wanted my children you know, you don't realize how fast time goes. And I have fond memories with my grandparents, but there weren't enough of them because they lived in Iowa. I grew up in Arizona. It's not easy to get there. You'd have to fly to Iowa and then drive three hours. And and so realizing how fast time is fleeting and, and our grandparents, you know, tomorrow's not promised. Uh, we, we made the easy decision to just have a season over here and it's going great. It was raining today. We're going to be around some snow. We have seasons here, um, but I'm plugged in really well. We have a lot of space for them and everyone's thriving. So it's it's really nice because then I can go away and do a movie. Know that my wife has support. My kids are happy. It's, it's just right. It feels right for right now, which is nice. Where are you at? Are you in L.A.? I'm, I'm in Dallas. Oh, Dallas. We almost went there. It's just the weather's a little, and we have no family there. We love <laughs> Dallas. We love Dallas. It's just not right now for us. Sure. Um, well, it's right now for a lot of people, I think, with economic incentives and job growth. I mean, uh, we are, it's fun. Dallas has always wanted to be New York and LA. And I think just through the very nature of uh, our the times we're living in, it's absorbing the coasts. We get some Texas, uh, we get some California, some New York, and um, although, but you know, I, I do know that uh, family is important to you, and I've, I've, there's a parallel that we have. My wife is, uh, she's from Jackson, Tennessee, which is an hour from Memphis, and so we live in Texas. My parents are from New York, and we have no support system. Also, we have two kids, uh, so we, we, I know the struggles of how, how old are your kids? Uh, we have an eight year old and an eight month old. So, uh, so yeah, yeah, oh. it's. Yeah, I would I would say the closest thing we have to support is our eight year old who is a capable pair of hands. But that's that's not why we're here today. Let's talk about you, Kellen Lutz, the man who's been an expendable, a vampire, a nurse in a sci fi opera. He's even been Hercules, people. Hercules, Kellen Lutz. Thank you for thank you for being you. You're you're. Oh, you're thank you, thank you. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> Well, why, why don't we just talk big picture here? Like, you know, what uh, what was Arizona like growing up? What did you see? Did you see young uh, Steve Reeves on the screen wanting to be Hercules one day? Like, what got you into acting? Man, honestly, I just fell into it. You know, it was really just a God-given path for me, and I said yes to it. I was going to, you know, growing up in a large family of, of a lot of brothers, I kind of made my own attention because I didn't have it at home. And I realized my father always lived in California. My mom, they separated younger. She grew up and remarried. And so I'd visit my dad and Arizona was great, but California was just better. And so I always wanted to have that dream to get and live out in California. The beaches, there's just more stuff. I think I just love the water too. I didn't like being landlocked in Arizona. And so my older blood brother, Brandon, he 
you know, always wanted to live in California and me being younger wanted what my brother wanted. And he tried really hard in school and wasn't able to get that full ride. So him being three and a half years older, he was a senior. I was a freshman. I was able to be like, okay, I have to do what my brother did, but more. And so I played football to get the sports scholarship. I did chemical engineering or I uh, did marching band to get a uh, band. I did uh, all these clubs. I did really great in my studies, SAT, ACTs. So I got that. I got the scholarships to go out of state and was really psyched for that. I ended up choosing uh, chemical engineering. I just had a great teacher, Mr. Mariner, and he really brought out the passion of mathematics and science for me. And once I was at Chapman University, I had mod I started modeling when I was 14. I had a buddy on my basketball team come out in a Dillard's ad in the newspaper, just cheesy, like selling clothes. And we made fun of him you know, as any kid would do. And he's like, laugh all you want. I made 500 bucks for that day. <laughs> and at the time, 14, you can't work till you're 15 and a half, 16. Uh, 14, I was mowing lawns, $5 a lawn. You can only, you know, I was making maybe 20 bucks. Like it was, it was 500 bucks was a lot of money. That was a hundred lawns to me. And I always had that calculative business mind. And so I was like, hey, Brian, um, what is this modeling thing? Like, how do you get into it? And in junior high, I had girls telling me I looked like an Abercrombie model. Now, I had no, I didn't shop. I shopped at thrift stores because I didn't care. And my dollars from mowing lawns went a whole lot further at thrift stores. So I didn't know. I didn't go to the mall to shop. I, I didn't go to the mall. I played sports and, uh, you know. So when I went to the mall one day just to see a movie, I saw an Abercrombie and Fitch store. And I was like, well, these girls think I look like that guy. Like, oh, okay, okay. So so I started thinking people think I'm cute, you know? And, and so I was like, can I model? Like, is that what modeling is? Like, you just pose and, you know, you get a take photos. Like I had no idea what it was. And so my best friend, she said, send your stuff to Ford. There's three agencies, Savage, Ford, and like, um, maybe even LA models. And so I had no idea. And she's like, send your stuff to Ford. They're a really good company. And in my head, I love trucks. I'm like Ford trucks, like Ford, Ford vehicles have, have a model. I mean, I guess they're a big company. I mean, okay. So I like, I didn't even have a headshot. I took two photos out of my photo album, a headshot and a body shot, scanned them in, <laughs> sent it to them. They called me up. They're like, yeah, we'd like to have a meeting. Still didn't know Ford, you know, I think I even went to the local Ford dealership being like, I'm here for a meeting. And they're like, <laughs> you got no money for a car, dude. Uh, and then anyway, so my modeling career started after that. They signed me and I started traveling the world and really loved it, made a lot of money, had a lot of amazing experiences. And that transitioned into California into bigger and better jobs and then commercials. Now commercials, you get to say something, you get to use your voice. And so I did the With Love with Hillary Duff. I did the... Mountain Dew commercial. Um, I found some success using my personality. And I was like, this is really freaking cool. Like I found something that I just loved that I had no idea with. If I, if I knew looking back, like if someone told me you could be an actor and I would have done more theater in school, I would have like signed up for all the theater classes and done that, but I didn't. Um, and I remember I was in school, uh, and I just had to decide, like I had to, school was very time consuming and it was in Orange County. Auditions were up in LA and everything was crapping out, right? Like I, I'd drive, I'd miss some classes if I had an audition and then I wouldn't be able to learn my lines. And anyways, I just had to choose. I'd say, look, what do I want to do with my life? 
And I sat there and I asked and I listened to myself. And I said, I'd rather fail at something I'm passionate about and like get to the end of my life and be like, I did what I wanted to do versus succeed at something I wasn't passionate about and get to the end of my life and be like, I did what someone else wanted me to do. And I think if you follow your heart, you will find that success regardless. It, it just will happen for you if, if you're meant to do it. Um, so I, that was my plan A. I didn't even think of a plan B. I'm like, I'm just going to try this. I had some savings from the modeling jobs. Um, I threw college and all the hard work we worked towards, aka my mom and I worked towards. But I, I think deep down inside, I just knew college wasn't for me. And thank God I listened to that and I didn't have fear with it. And I just became an actor, signed up for acting classes, didn't matter which ones. Some were really not good ones. <laughs> and you learn the difference between good ones and bad ones. Learned a lot about what to do in acting. I mean, I didn't know for the longest time I would bring my sides into the audition and just read it like this. And no one tells you that stuff. No one tells you to memorize. You don't have to. But again, it's really great to memorize your lines and to act like you aren't reading the lines, but like act them out and react and active listening and like be versus the noises, that audition paper, especially if you have, if you have most of them and you know, a lot of them and you're transit, you know, there's just things you pick up. I wish I had a mentor prior to that, but then my career took off and really was blessed even with twilight, right? Like I was doing generation kill in Africa for seven months, which was, my frat years, you know, hanging out with all those guys, seeing parts of the world that I had no idea existed and coming back, having my team say, Hey, uh, we want you to audition for this vampire movie, reading it and being like, <laughs> no, <laughs> this is, this is corny. This is not what I just got done playing Marine. Like give me expendables or something like that. I don't want to do this one. Um, but I'm glad I trusted my team. And uh, that just took off again and really helped make a name for myself. And I love action movies. So it helped me acquire new action movies for myself, just like do justice. Like I'm a huge, huge Liam Neeson fan. Love his voice, love his acting. He's so trained magnificently and his taken movies are fun entertainment. Like, I don't know how, his family hasn't left him yet because he always gets them in danger, but he always gets them back and he never dies. Um, but they're always fun and he does it really cool. Um, so that's why when I read this movie by Javier and he told me his vision for it, uh, I was like, wow, this is like my taken, you know, my wife, she dies, my brother dies, my daughter somewhat gets taken. And I just thought it was really cool. I like his vision. Also, Javier, I love directors who are just easy to collaborate with. His son is a drifter, so he drifts cars for a profession now. And I'm like, oh, was that's that, was that his BMW in the movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's really unique character. Like, when do you ever play an action hero? I mean, Jason Statham can drift and transporter, but he's just he's the transporter, right? He he knows how to drive cars just like James Bond does. But to have a, a, a hero drift cars and that's part of his backstory, it was fun learning that from Javier's son. And he did most of the stunt work just because I didn't have enough time to, but to have these experts teach you a new thing, I, I mean, I get to add that to the resume. I know how to drift now. And it's just fun. And then you get to wear a hood. So you get to feel this like dark energy and this cool feel to yourself. I always love whenever I get into the trailer, I get my character clothes on right away because it helps me put, you know, Kellen to the side and help me just put on the character and feel it right away. And so it's just really, really cool. And it's sad too, man. You you do a movie like this and you learn about the industry of organ harvesting. And the easiest way to do that is to kill the thing, you know, to have a dead body for the most part, or it's going to die. So it's very horrific actually. And 
And one of my organizations that I work with called Saving Innocence deals with sex trafficking. So these children are being sold for sex. And they have this other arena where children are being sold for organs. You're just like, ah, oh, like it, it it happens. It happens in, in, in the world that we live in. And so being a part of it and then having a daughter myself, it really does pull at your heartstrings. And you're like, what would I do if she was taken? And you can see the 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 Emmett Cullen, the father bear, the the fighter for the family against the monsters of the world, vengeance come come to play. And so, yeah, I don't know if I'd ever kill anyone, but never say never, you know. Well, there, I mean, there, there's extreme amounts of humanity you bring to the role. And I, I have to wonder if is it because you have now two kids, um, you know, I, I can't tell you how how much I felt for you in um, in this little wonderful number. Oh, um, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, your your arc in that movie is you having to suffer in prison because of you sort of getting vengeance uh, for the man who took your family's life. And I, every time I watch that, I like, there's three movies that get to me every single time. One is Apollo 11 or Apollo 13. The other one is Field of Dreams when he's like, Dad, do you want to have a catch? And then the third one is Science Fiction Volume 1. Just like watching you come apart, it's like you tap into something that I think, I mean, that's like Brando territory. And to see you do uh, it again, it's yeah. like I just, the way you unravel is, is I think that's your superhero strength. So, Oh, man, that's, thank you. Thank you. So I'm, just, I'm wondering, like, how do you tap into that? Well, I mean, Osiris Child, which, man, I loved working on that movie. And like having our director and just the cast, and we called it Science Fiction Volume One, though. Osiris Child. Like, I was hoping we could do many volumes. It was just really, really cool. It should have been up to seven by now. I mean, if I had I my mean, choice, dude, I, I would. I would. It. I loved it. I loved it. It's it's funny seeing Tegan grow up, and she's doing her thing, and proud of her. She played the little girl, but just such a cool story. I love sci-fi. Um, and that movie, I didn't have kids yet, so you use your imagination, and music really helps me with drawing emotion out, and. Just the sadness, the injustice of a stupid drunk driver coming. Like, what would you do? I would freaking. I I I don't know if I could withhold the anger, right? And especially when your world, just like this one with Max, when your whole world is taken from you, what do you have to live for? Like, yeah, you know, unless you are fighting and ridding the world, but. It's it's great also because that character Sai in Osiris Child he uh, he lost all hope so he lives a life of hopelessness and for me I'm a believer right go to church believe in God I am hope filled and I don't know how you do the industry or anything without something to believe in outside of yourself because the world we live in bad shit happens it just happens and so you know. If, if 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 you have nothing to put hope into and you can't control everything, then damn, it's a depressing world to live in. Uh, and so with my character playing the hopelessness was like really challenging for me in Osiris Child uh, because it's just against my true nature. So every day I've set, I'd always have an anchor in reality and I'd like go home and listen to worship music or like be in my Bible or something like that. Uh, but like, yeah, just, it's crazy the way that your, your mind can like go from one to the other and much like your body too, right? Your body remembers things. It doesn't know, make believe from, you know, fiction to nonfiction. And then you have a movie. So I had that one with my daughter being gone, but I, I'm not a dad yet, but you can use your imagination to like create these, you know, fictional memories and then here i have a daughter now and it's like that much more and and i find it really cool as an actor when you have that process with creating it's it's always in you like you don't get rid of it right it's not like i'm mad like i wouldn't do a role where i'm 
I'm sickened at myself for playing that role. I just would say no to it. And so all the roles that I do play, they, they sort of like they're in that memory box and I can pull from it and add that to the repertoire of helping me get somewhere mentally and emotionally and just having my daughter, like having FaceTime with her because we'll FaceTime. And in that scene, I'm just like, oh, and then that day when, you know, the the murder and the taking happens, we prepped it with my wife where I'm like, hey, I'm just, I'm going to want to FaceTime Ashton after this. If that's, you know, you can just be ready for it because it's emotionally draining and you want to not fool your body if you don't have to. So definitely, uh, I mean, I like those hero moments too. I like characters that have story arcs and kind of push against the grain in a healthy way. So yeah, that's, that's what I'm into. Well, I, I really love the line that you give in this movie where uh, Efren Ramirez's character is talking about quality. He wants quantity time with his kids. And you're like, well, it's all quality. Every minute with your kid is quality. And I expect that that was written that way. But, you know, hearing you deliver that, it it, it just it made me, you know, having two kids in mind, it made me put a different thought process on it. You're right. It is. Everything with your kid is quality. So now you just have to focus on getting the quantity of it. So. You know what? It, it's very interesting because that line, it had me thinking as well, too. And like now having kids, uh, you know, kids, and I'm sure you know this because you have a child who's eight. They don't need a lot of the same memory, right? They, they just need quality time. Like now, now with this thing, it's like your phone, you got to put it aside because like if your child comes up to you, be like, daddy, 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 like it would kill me if my child had to say daddy three times. I, I know that I'm not, I, I have an unhealthy relationship with something. So a lot of times I don't have my phone with my kiddos. Um, but then I want to, and then I miss taking photos and videos of them. So I'm really quick. And my wife and I, we're on the same team. It's like, hey, I'm trying to get your attention. It's like, oh, because we, we still, we don't live on our phone. We're very hands-on. But also to a kid, you know, you look back at any of even my memories. Like you don't have to have every weekend be special. But if you took your child to the trampoline park three weekends in a row, they would remember at the end of the year, they're like, hey, what's your favorite thing we did this year? They'd be like, daddy took me every day to the trampoline park, you know, in their head, that one moment, that two moment, that three moments, like every single day. And you're like, I only did it three times, but hey, you know, I, you're making me feel like a good dad. And you realize it's, it's, I mean, I, I get what he's saying. Like, you just want time with your kid. I know when I go away, because especially during the strike, there was no work to have. So I could be very intentional with my children and with my family and, and soak it up. And that's what, that's sort of the hard fluidity with actors and, and, and in our family, it's like, we don't know what tomorrow brings. So I'm really digesting this time with my family because I know there's going to be season where I'm working every single day. And they're going to be coming with me. We want to homeschool and like bring the kids with. But again, there's days where it's just going to be me on set and I'm going to be really busy. And that's been my whole career. I've been really busy and then other times not so busy. And and now that I have kids, it's the best excuse when I'm not busy to like have them. When I was single and not busy and there's nothing I could do about it, it's like, oh, okay, I need to book a vacation. Because when I book a vacation, I book work. So where do I want to go? And it was just like really kind of funny like that. And, and yeah, now, now it's just, yeah, it's beautiful. It's, it's beautiful. Just, just life and, and having the kiddos. That, that That's great. So, so what, what are you doing for Thanksgiving? If it's not, uh... my wife, so we're here, we just moved to Franklin, Tennessee. We're a mile from my, my in-laws, my wife's family, my wife's so close to her family, like I am as well with mine, but mine are in Arizona. And especially with me having to leave, for movies and stuff like this other one I have to do in Kentucky, the one I just did in Vegas, it's easier for me to leave and have peace of mind knowing that my wife has her support system. So as much as I'm sure my mom wishes the grandkids could live in Scottsdale right now, while they're so young, I'm sure it's easier when, you know, they get to be eight or seven and they're little helpers. Uh, you know, it's just, so yeah, we're hosting my lot. My wife loves cooking. I love eating. So that's a great, great team right there. Symbiotic. And, yeah. Yeah. Symbiotic. Mm -hmm. So we're going to, we're going to host everyone here. 
Um, I'm going to watch my football. It's really fun too. Like we're two hours later. So whereas in LA, the games would be on and, you know, I put the kids down by eight o'clock. I get to watch football. It's like, it's, it's, it's just great. And, and uh, like the night games. Um, But yeah, we also, we just love the family time, the traditions and just being together, going around the table, saying what we're grateful for. So, yeah. What about you? What are you doing? Uh, we're going to go to the Ozarks. We're uh, my, Since my, my in-laws are in Tennessee, we're going to meet halfway, and uh, that way it's less travel time. Uh, have you been it's before? pretty exciting to get out of Dallas. Yeah, have you been to the Ozarks? Uh, never, actually. Driven through wow. Arkansas plenty of times to get to Tennessee, but uh, never really stopped and smelled the whatever their flora is. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever watch the show? No, my wife, she's a big fan of it, but I've not gotten into it. What, yeah. Do you like to stream or binge things at the end of the year or around holidays? Uh, I mean, around the holidays, we love Hallmark. I mean, we're very cautious of what our children watch and we're always with the children. So there's very few times we get to watch things that aren't G or PG. Um, but my wife and I, we just got into Bosch, which we love, especially it's it's a uh, symbiotic of like our time in LA and we just love that's what's beautiful about LA and New York and you know places where the city is a character in itself and so Bosch uh it's cinematic it's beautiful like each episode feels like a movie and uh even even like suits we love suits so when we can find a wholesome show to stream together it's amazing or we do like Ninja Warrior together and like that's okay for the kids to be running around with but uh but yeah, we don't we don't really watch a lot. We'll, we'll have a movie night once a week. Um, and then there's things like I, I'm a morning bird and a night owl. So I'll watch stuff, uh, you know, just to see what there, I guess there's, there's just so much stuff out there. So it's hard to keep up. I'm on a group chat with my brothers and a lot of our friends back in Arizona. And half of them aren't married. And I'm like, how do you have time to watch all this stuff? And th- and I'm like, oh, that's why, because you have so much time to yourself. Mm-hmm. So uh, and but I don't mind it. I I'd rather have a family and um, have little kiddos to chase around. Well, that's great. Yeah, you know the, the I guess where I'm going with this is uh, it takes me eight hours to watch a two hour movie with a kid. But like I, I it's a, a phrase that I cemented a long time ago. There's a pause button on a movie, not on my family's life. So yeah, f- focus on what the importance is. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which is funny because I like even with my wife, I just I like breaking stuff up. I also get kind of antsy unless I'm really unless I'm in a movie theater, then I love watching it. Uh, but even my wife will will do like she's more of the binger, I feel like. And I'm like, can we just let's just do one episode a night? Like I like having structure to it. So if it's like, okay, every week when the kids go down, let's watch 30 minutes of this, you know, just to get through it versus when will we have a chance to watch 90 minutes of something all in one row? It's like, you're going to have to stay up really late. That's going to ruin your sleep. You're going to wake up later. Uh, so it's, it's just like figuring out, like you said, takes you eight hours to watch a movie. Um, but you're right. Like you can't pause in life and, and I'd rather just, you know, be with them. So. Beautiful. Mr. Lux, it's been a pleasure. It's been an honor. My best Thanks, to your Mark. family. So much. Best to Shane Abess. And um, if our paths should cross, maybe we'll share screen time on another DVD. Because I don't know if you paid that. This is me at the bottom. I, this is my pull quote from the review of... Wow, so, no way. Yeah, that's why I was Mark, really excited to, to have this talk. That is so cool. Has that, have you had your quotes on a lot of movies? Not uh, three or four, not not as many as I would like, but this was this was this one meant a lot. So it was. It was That's great. really cool. I had no idea. Well, now it's great to put a face to that name. That's awesome. <laughs> well, great. This has been a pleasure. So I'll let you get to the rest of your day, but um, we'll catch you next time.